Chapter The Azores Islands were in the Atlantic Ocean off the Portuguese coast. The Wakanda jet passed over the islands at Zulu 22.00 hours. Soon after, the communications computer interrupted Tichala and Ororo from their work. The face of a German pilot appeared on the computer screen, soon after, he provided the coordinates for the meeting. Thank you, said Tichala. Then the pilot disappeared from the screen. Meanwhile Aurora maneuvered a floating holographic document to her left side with her right index finger. It says here that Germany had one of the better treatment of mutants in Europe, said Aurora. Therefore the Chancellor is on our side for the vote. That's one down, said Tichala as he brushed his holographic documents to the left side. Then he took control of the jet from the autopilot. Tichal reduced the jet's speed as he flew to the coordinates. On the horizon the German Chancellor's jet appeared, and it was headed towards the Wakanda jet. Within minutes, Tichala shifted the jet to hover mode, and the larger Chancellor's jet followed. Then the two planes lined up side by side. Aurora raised from her seat, and she went to the side door. A sensor on the door indicated that it had aligned with the sensor on the Chancellor Jet's door. Ready, said Aurora. Tichala relayed the information to the German pilot. Then an enclosed circular tunnel extended from the Chancellor's Jet, and it locked onto the Wakanda Jet side door. Afterwards Aurora opened the door. Tichala joined her at the tunnel, and they entered it. The tunnel was made from a rubbery substance and the floor was a metal ramp. The Chancellor waited at the other end. The German leader was a medium-built man in a blue business suit. He had a welcoming body language, and he extended his right hand. He doesn't seem perturbed by us, whispered Aurora so softly that only Tichala's hyper-hearing could pick it up. Vain. Good evening Tichala and Aurora, said the Chancellor. Good evening said the two leaders, and they shook the Chancellor's hand firmly. We have much to discuss about the theft, said the Chancellor. If you would follow me. Moments later, the three leaders settled in a comfortable suite. Then the Chancellor spoke. The reason I wanted the meeting in this manner is to avoid my nation becoming hysterically concerned about my safety in both your presence. As you may be aware, your reputations as being dangerous has increased, said the Chancellor. So this is a relatively secret meeting. Thanks for your confidence in us, said Tichala, although he smelled and heard the security outside the door. It is appreciated, said Aurora while she scanned the suite for electrical listening devices with her powers, but none were present. I'm a practical man and an assured one, said the Chancellor. As for you Aurora it has been a pleasure to finally meet you. I have admired your work with the climate change issue and the underprivileged. Which brings me to the crime that we are here to discuss. I want to apologize for the incident. Aurora crossed her legs, and she leaned forward slightly. Thank you for the kind words and the apology, said Aurora. What have you gathered so far, inquired Tichella. Usually he and Aurora would have had more information on the issue, but the Secret Service could not glean any intel from the German bank in question. Where to begin, remarked the Chancellor. I have been told that your donation money was transferred to a specialty account. Once in the account, the $60 million was broken down into smaller sums and distributed to other accounts across the world. It is in the process of moving around that your money disappeared without a trace. Who has authorization to do such a thing? asked Aurora. The account manager and his superiors, replied the Chancellor, and he brought his hands together. What about the account manager? probed Tichella. I was informed that the police have ruled that as a suicide. Medication and such were found in the car when they took it out the river answered the Chancellor. Are they sure, quizzed Tichella. From what we understand, they never recovered the body. 
while the bank was undergoing a merger. He was airmarked as being redundant. He even left behind a letter at his home, responded the Chancellor. Furthermore the bank has been tainted by the theft, and the merger is on the rocks. This merger was very important for my nation's financial sector. Tichala picked up on the disappointment in the Chancellor's voice. Therefore I want to expeditiously find the culprits involved. So I would like a collaborative effort on our part, said the Chancellor. Right now, the theft, the investigation, and the account manager have not reached the media. We have a lid on that for the next 48 hours. When the news does break I would like the culprits to be in custody at the same time. Working together will not be a problem, said Tichala. So where do you want to start, inquired the Chancellor. Tichala and Ororo glanced quickly at each other, and then they faced the Chancellor. The account manager, the couple said in unison. Very well. But please try to keep incognito. I still want deniability when everything ends, said the Chancellor. Afterwards Tichala and Ororo departed from the Chancellor's jet. Back on their jet, Ororo brought up a point with Tichala. If the situation was reverse, would we allow the heads of a another country to snoop around Wakanda, asked Ororo. It would depend on what they were looking for, replied Tichala. It is interesting. We will have to come back to this at some point, said Ororo. Then Tichala piloted the jet towards Germany. Meanwhile Ororo slipped to the second compartment. She checked for the spare clothes in a drawer. Eventually she found the items she wanted. Moments afterwards Ororo returned to the seat. Tichala turned to her and a smile came on his face. Ororo also smiled. She wore sunglasses and a headscarf hid her white hair. Beside those items, Ororo had on a sleeveless black jacket, a white t-shirt, long black leather pants, and boots. Gloves were on her hands. There is the baseball cap and jacket that you wore the last time in the back, said Ororo. Got you, said Tichala as he turned on the jet stealth mode. Then Ororo returned to her research and Tichala contacted Wakanda's secret service for information on the account manager's house. Chapter Metzler entered his apartment that was in the Norwegian seaside town of Riser. He did not trust the plastic surgeon that changed his face so he wore a fake short beard and mustache. Moreover he tried his best to avoid CCTV cameras. He was a solidly built man, 33 years of age and smart. He had no intention of spending the money he stole from Wakanda any time soon. He would wait until the heat had passed. The small sum he had converted into hard currency were inside Tupperware cases under his bed. He was after the easy life and the impending job loss played no part in his decision to steal the money. Furthermore he knew that the monies were intended for an immigrant's foundation and that the organization had planned to assist other humanitarian foundations in Africa with half of the money. Still Metzler did not care and he was confident that he would get away with the theft. Chapter Metzler had lived in a two-level house outside of Berlin. Tichala and Ororo teleport to the house late in the night. The Black Panther scanned the area with his heightened senses while Ororo used her tools to open the back door lock. Expertly Ororo overcame the lock, and she entered the house. Tichala looked around once again, eventually, he slipped inside. They kept the lights off because of their night vision. Immediately Ororo scanned for hidden rooms. While Tichala carefully went through waste paper baskets and the computer. After an hour they found nothing to link Metzler to the theft. What do you think, asked Tichala. Is he innocent? No. This is too co incidental, said Ororo. He and the money disappearing at the same time. Her words prompted Tichala to recollect the information on Metzler. The file stated that Metzler grew up in an orphanage, he was a bright student at school 
and he was at the bank for ten years. Then he is alive somewhere, said Tichala. Most likely he would have needed a new identity and new documentation to go along with it. Then let's check out the fake ID providers in the country, said Ororo. Okay, said Tichala. Subsequently they returned to the jet. Tichala checked the security system and the jet was still invisible, moreover, it was outside the flight paths of other planes. Meanwhile Aurora requested the information on the ID providers from the spy androids stationed in Germany. In five minutes, one name was sent to the main computer on the control panel. The person was named Adler, but no picture of him or current his location was available. It was suspected that he did work for a weapons smuggling group in the country. Then let's inquire about Adler from the weapons smugglers, said Tichala. Consequently Aurora requested the new information and the response came instantly along with pictures of the suspects. They are in Saxony and the German secret service are currently building a case against them, so they have a mole inside, said Aurora. We will have to be careful then. All right, said T. Chella. Afterwards Aurora piloted the jet to the destination. While T. Chella took the opportunity to call Umba. But Umba's communicator had a busy signal at first. Who could he be talking to? Tichala pondered, because the 15-year-old had no other friends than Enzi. Afterwards Umba came on the line. The conversation was brief and predictable. How was school? It was fine. Are you doing your homework? Yeah. We will call you later. Okay. Then Tichala ended the call and he hoped that Umba would learn from his experience with Enzi. Moreover Tichala wondered who caused the breakup. Eventually the jet arrived at the location that was a club. At once, the sensors intercepted encrypted transmissions from a building across the street. That must be the German secret service, said Ororo. They may come in when things get messy, said Tichala. Then we will make it quick. Subsequently the couple teleported into an unlit alley. Tichala concealed the sword in his jacket, moreover, the weapon was shielded from metal detectors. Afterwards the couple strode to the house club. Several punk and mohawk hairstyle party goers were at the entrance. Chapter The burly bouncer took one look at the attractive Ororo and he allowed her in free. Tichala tried to enter behind her, but the bouncer blocked him. I'm with her, said Tichala. Doesn't matter to me, said the bouncer as he towered over Tichala. You still have to pay. It was too early to cause a scene thought Tichala. Therefore he paid the bouncer with the US currency he had in the jacket pocket. I'll be getting that back soon, said Tichala as he passed the bouncer. Yeah right, said the bouncer. Inside the club was jammed packed, moreover, it was loud with throbbing electronic music. Tichala controlled his hyper hearing to avoid a headache. Then he and Ororo checked the locations of the exits. Then the couple maneuvered to the higher level, and they spotted the weapon smugglers. The group comprised of five men. The ten other men around them were security. The leader of the smugglers was named House, furthermore, he had short black hair and a hard face. This was the person Tichala and Ororo headed for. As expected, the security formed a shield around the smugglers as the couple approached. We want to speak with House, said Tichala. Who wants to speak with him, grunted a bodyguard. I rather tell him in person, said Tichala. The bodyguard walked up to Tichala's face. Move away, said the bodyguard. In a flash Tichala's hands moved to the bodyguard's neck. Four fingers struck several of the bodyguard's nerves. Suddenly the man fell to the side. Instantly the rest of the security converged on Tichala. All the while, Ororo headed towards the smugglers. She clenched her fists, 
and around them were barely visible electrical charges. Consequently she punched anyone who attacked her. In the background she heard the screams and bones being broken of the bodyguards from Tichala's punishment. Eventually Aurora leapt onto the table in front of house. The girls that were around the smugglers fled. Immediately the men attacked her, and she shocked them except for house. Aurora lifted her right leg sharply then she swung it at house. Subsequently her boot struck him in the face. The man fell onto the red couch. Then Aurora took control of house's right arm, and she pushed him onto the edge of the table. Quickly, Aurora withdrew the knife from her waist. Then without warning, Aurora stabbed her small knife into the table inches from House's face. Where is Adler? shouted Aurora in German. House blurted out what Aurora demanded. Aurora pushed away House and she turned to Tichala. I have it, she shouted. As planned, both Tichala and Aurora headed for the balcony and they leapt off it onto the first floor. Out the corner of his left eye, Tichala saw that the bouncer was charging into him. The Black Panther stood on his toes and he inhaled deeply while his right fist connected to underneath the bouncer's jaw. Instantly the large man fell backwards in a blacked out state. Subsequently Tichala took his money from the bouncer's shirt pocket. Told you, he said. They're on. Tichala and Aurora made it to one of the exits, and they emerged from the building in a hurry. They headed for a nearby alley, subsequently, the couple teleport to the jet. Chapter that went well, said Aurora. She settled into the pilot chair and made use of the armrests. Sure did, remarked Tichala as he dropped his jacket into one of the passenger seats. Let's hope that House does not tip off Adler of our impending visit. Well we can't give Adler too much time to get away. Immediately Aurora plotted a course for the German state Baravia. On the journey, she and Tichala worked on the UN country's information. Finally the jet arrived over Adler's residence. Then the couple concentrated on the new task. Firstly Aurora created an electromagnetic pulse on the residents. Consequently all the power went. Afterwards Tichala teleported to the front of the building while Aurora flew quickly to the back. Then Tichala kicked in the front door of the one level residence. His eyes shined in the dark. Then Tichala realized that he was in the living room because of the furniture he saw. Meanwhile he smelled both Aurora and someone else. The strange scent was nearby. Adler, shouted Tichala. The flame from a lighter came from a corner on Tichala's left. Who are you man, shouted Adler, and he waved a gun at Tichala. Suddenly Adler turned to his right, because his body unconsciously sensed danger in that direction. To Adler's horror he saw two gleaming eyes in the darkness coming ever closer to him. Back shouted Alder, and he fired wildly at Aurora. Simultaneously Tichala leapt full stretch at Adler. He seized Adler's gun hand and then squeezed the inside of the man's wrist with his thumb. Meanwhile, Tichala shot his right knee into Adler's stomach. Adler squirmed, consequently, he dropped both the gun and the lighter. The strike to the gut took the wind out of Adler and he crumpled to the floor. Then Tichala turned to Aurora. I'm all right, she said. Then they kissed briefly. Afterwards Aurora opened her left palm, and she created an electrical current. The current illuminated Adler's face. The man cowered in the sight of the power. What do you want? Adler mumbled in German. Have you seen this person? asked Aurora in German while she held out her Kamoyo with Metzler's picture on the screen. No. No I have never seen that person before, replied Adler, and he sniffled a little. Are you sure? inquired Aurora. Yes I'm sure, answered Adler. Who have you recently done work for? interrogated Tichala. Several people. 
But I don't keep records, because that is bad for my line of work. Then you are of no further use to us, said Ororo. As a result, Adler believed his life was in danger, therefore, he tried to save himself. Wait, wait, check the plastic surgeon, sometimes her clients come to me afterwards, said Adler. What's her name and where is she, probed Ororo. Chapter Adler was taken unconscious and bounded into the jet. Soon afterwards the plane headed for Hamburg. Do you have doubts that we are on the right track? asked Ororo as she leaned against Tichala. No me neither. Tichala brought his left arm around Ororo, and he enjoyed her sweet fragrance. Furthermore he liked these quiet moments with her. Subsequently Ororo gently ran her right hand along Tichala's arm. The holographic documents slowly moved in front of them. While on the main computer were details on Dr. Allen. The plastic surgeon ran a legitimate business that was not even suspected by the either the German Secret Service or the Federal Police for being involved in helping criminals. Moreover Allen lived in a skyscraper penthouse. Tichala watched the clock and it was 3.00 am. We should call Alan to see if she is in, he said. I'll place us outside the apartment, said Ororo. Then she instructed the jet to hover outside the 112th floor of the skyscraper. Meanwhile Tichala called the number that was given in the doctor's file. Alan answered in a sleepy voice, subsequently, Tichala ended the call. She's there, he said. Okay, said Aurora while she positioned herself by the door. Thereafter she exited the jet, and then she flew out towards a window. The lights were off in the penthouse. Then Aurora concentrated a beam of plasma energy from her right first finger. She applied the beam to the window, subsequently, the plasma energy melted the plated glass. As a result an opening was made. Ororo glanced behind her at Tichala who waited by the door. She winked at him. Consequently Tichala understood the message, and he leapt out the plane. Ororo caught him with manipulated air currents and she brought him close to her. Then Ororo and Tichala entered the penthouse. Suddenly Ororo saw the quick bioelectricity of three persons headed for her. Chapter Thus Ororo increased the air pressure in front of her and it repelled the attackers over various items of furniture. Meanwhile Tichala darted for the bedroom. A light came from the room and when Tichala busted in he found Alan gathering her belongings in a traveling bag to flee. The plastic surgeon was 45 years old, moreover, she had short blonde hair. She did not scream when Tichala entered, furthermore, she allowed him to approach her. As Tichala was in range, Alan slashed a knife at his face. However Tichala caught her hand before she could inflict damage. Afterwards Tichala raised his kamoyo in front the doctor and he could tell that she had seen the face on the screen before. I want to know what he looks like now, said Tichala. I don't keep records. I can't remember said Alan. Tichala stared intensely into her green eyes. Doctor. Please don't play games with me, he said. Alan realized that he was neither the Secret Service nor the police. That he was a totally different person who may not play by the rules. Okay, said Alan. Consequently Tichala released her arm, and she took out a case from her traveling bag. She opened the case and she took out a portable computer hard drive. Then she attached the hard drive to her laptop computer. An encrypted file appeared on the laptop screen, thereafter, Alan ran a decryption program and she entered a password. Subsequently Metzler's old face appeared next to his new one. Then Tichala attached his Kamoyo to the laptop, and he copied over the information. Meanwhile Aurora entered the room. Problems? asked Ororo. We got his new face, replied Tichala. 
Then Tichala applied pressure to a nerve on Alan's neck and she lost consciousness. Afterwards Tichala and Aurora left the room. As they headed for the window, Tichala saw the bodyguards sprawled silently on the floor. Within seconds the couple entered their jet and it flew off. Then Tichala awakened Adler, and the prisoner recognized Metzler from Alan's picture. Thanks. That was not so hard, said Aurora. Then they asked him for Metzler's new passport numbers, thus, he gave it to them from his memory. Will you let me go now, asked Alder sheepishly. No, replied Aurora. Then Tichala made Adler unconscious again with pressure applied to a nerve. Afterwards Adler was dropped off at a park. Subsequently Tichala contacted the German Chancellor, and he sent the Metzler information along with Adler's and Allen's locations. Thanks, said the Chancellor. I'll have my people work on it. But we have a new situation. We had locked down the bank and the employees associated with the issue. But someone has talked and a rumor has started on the internet. So it is imperative that we find Metzler quickly. We got it, said Tichala. Chapter Aurora sent Metzler's new identity and the European passport number to Wakanda's secret service. The hope was that an urban area CCTV camera may have caught Metzler somewhere in the world. We should also check for additions like beards and mustaches, said Tichala to the head of the secret service. Results came 30 minutes later. A 50% match came from Riser in Norway. The picture was distorted because the person wore a cap and his head was slightly down. Subsequently the couple relayed the information to the German Chancellor. I'll speak with Norway then and see if we can reach some kind of arrangement, said the Chancellor. That will be good, said Tichala. Then the couple headed for the Northern Europe country. Chapter It was 6.00 M in Riser. Metzler was spotted in the market, therefore, that was where Tichala and Aurora started their hunt. Tichala was acquainted with Metzler's scent from the house, thus, he tried to pick up on it at the market. Nothing, said Tichala. Let's check those apartments on that side, said Aurora. The apartments were a few blocks from the market, moreover, they had a great view of the Norwegian Sea. Eventually Tichala and Aurora stood in front the first of three apartment units. Then Tichala caught Metzler's scent. He's in this one, said Tichala. Subsequently they entered the building, and Tichala tracked the scent to the second floor then to apartment four. Suddenly Aurora heard a noise behind her. Thus she turned around whereupon her eyes came upon an elderly woman. May I ask why you are sneaking around there, inquired the old woman. Then Tichala heard a running noise in the apartment. Metzler heard her, thought Tichala. Therefore he crashed in his right shoulder into the door and it was pushed open. In an instant, he saw as Metzler dived through the window. Tichala gave chase and he leapt out the same window. Subsequently he landed on his feet. Immediately he looked at his surroundings and he witnessed as Metzler yanked a driver out of a car, thereafter, he sped off. Aurora flew out the window and she floated above Tichala. I see him, said Aurora and she pointed her right hand at the car that was traveling at maximum speed. Simultaneously Metzler cut across a gas tanker on the road. The gas tanker driver lost control of the vehicle. The tanker leaned to the right while it swerved towards the sidewalk. A stunned jogger stood in line of the impact. Okay, said Aurora. Chapter then she extended her left hand. Subsequently Aurora's right hand manipulated an air pressure that cushioned the tanker. Meanwhile her left hand created an electrical disturbance in Metzler's car, as a result, the car's battery died. Despite Aurora's efforts, the tanker still neared the jogger, therefore, Tichala teleported to the scene, and he grabbed the person. Half a second later, he teleported out of the danger. 
miraculously the tanker slid onto the sidewalk, but it did not explode because of the cushioning. Meanwhile Tichala ensured that the jogger was all right before he headed for Metzler's car. Also Aurora flew at the tanker, and she looked to see if the driver was seriously injured. He was not there for Aurora went towards the stalled car. Metzler attempted to run from the car, however, Aurora slammed him into the asphalt with a gust of wind. Subsequently Tichala appeared nearby, and he approached Metzler. Then Tichala raised Metzler roughly. You have something that belongs to us. We want it back, said Tichala. You will never see that money again, said Metzler. And isn't your country mega rich? So what if I took some off your hands? Then he chuckled. You're a disgrace, said Tichala. Then he shot his forehead into Metzler's face. The impact broke Metzler's nose and sent a shock to his brain that knocked him out. Aurora landed next to Tichala, and she was speaking with the German Chancellor over her kamoyo. We got him, said Aurora. We'll hand him over. But where exactly? Afterwards Aurora ended the call. We will drop him off at the German Secret Service headquarters in Munich. Someone will be waiting for us, said Aurora. Okay, said Tichella. Is the driver all right? Yes he is. What about the jogger? Shaken up. Let's check the apartment before we leave said Aurora as she observed the bloodied Metzler. Soon after the couple returned to the apartment, and they quickly discovered the hidden money. I wonder where he hid the rest? Aurora asked herself. Subsequently Tichala and Aurora carried Metzler to Germany. Whereupon German telepaths took the information on the money's whereabouts from Metzler's mind. He had placed a percentage in the tax haven state Delaware in the United States and in London. The people he dealt with had asked no questions and he provided no proper identification. The rest of the money he had converted into several currencies and he had them circulating in several accounts until the time he needed them. Chapter The gag order was taken off the media, and Metzler was presented to the courts. In a statement to the media, the German Chancellor stated that the public should feel confident that their money will be protected.